my dears and welcome back to my channel. Girl, Mama is back with some more art tutorials. Yes, boo boo. Today is going to be the first installment of my new how to draw manga and comics series and I know a lot of you are thinking Didn't you already make a how to draw manga series? And the answer is yes. But the thing is I made that series when I first joined YouTube and now I am up to volume 5 of my published series Sacred which is available in stores like Barnes and Nobles and all that good stuff and as I'm working on volume 5 of my series I'm realizing I've grown a lot as a writer. I hope and my art has really developed a lot over the years. I think! But in all seriousness, there's a lot of new techniques and tips and tricks that I have been developing over the years that I want to pass on to you, my YouTube babies. Hashtag love my babies. Oh, we have so much good stuff coming up on this channel. So please, guys, if you do not want to miss any of that good stuff, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you will not miss any part of this series that I will be doing on this channel, along with other fun videos. And be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you really enjoy it because it gives me a lot of encouragement. But it'll also show YouTube that you guys really enjoy this kind of video and my video will more likely be suggested to other people who might really find this video useful. So without further ado, let's get started. So in today's video, we're going to be covering how to express moods and emotions through panels using camera angles, shadows, and all types of good stuff, guys. And while you're writing your scripts and planning out your pages, you're going to want to have a better understanding of how your panel layouts and whatnot will really, really affect how the reader experiences your story. And not for nothing, expressing emotion in panels, very important if you did not know. <laughs> when you look at a manga or comic, every page you're going to see will have what they call panels. That means squares, rectangles, circles, and so on that basically contain artwork, different scenes, different characters, speech bubbles, and all that good stuff. Also, please forgive my nails. Do not make fun of my chipped nails. I'm a painter. I was painting. It destroyed my manicure. Whatever. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Sometimes the artwork could be outside of the panel. They don't need to be completely framed within a square or a rectangle. But for the sake of this tutorial, I will be referring to any bit of artwork that is on the page, a panel. Okay, so in this first panel, you're going to see a chibi. And for those of you who do not know what a chibi is, they're basically little cute mascot versions of characters in anime and manga. Anime and manga use them traditionally to express more comical scenes. So right off the bat, expressing your character on your page or in a panel as a chibi automatically conveys a more comical mood. It'll, it tells the readers, don't take the scene so seriously. <laughs> the most creepiest thing could be happening in this panel but if you draw your character as a chibi, the viewer is not going to feel as scared. You understand? Hope that made sense. Let's move on. <laughs> so in this panel, we just have a chibi against a white background and a small, normal little speed bubble that says, huh? So right off the bat, you get like this cute, lighthearted little mood. However, girl, the moment you add a little gradient into this panel, automatically you feel the weight the weight of her emotion, you know what I mean? Like you could feel her stress as she says, huh? But now if you open up her mouth and give her some stress lines, uh, she's stressed, you know what I mean? Like it adds so much more. She's not here for it. Like whatever she's experiencing, whatever she's hearing, whatever she's seeing, she does not like it, not one bit. And now when you change the speech bubble to make it more wibbly wobbly and crazy, now it went from huh to huh. <laughs> so the moment you change the shape of a speech bubble, immediately the viewer knows they have to read what's in it differently. Now before we move on to a different image and a different panel to deal with different moods and whatnot, I wanted to play a little bit more with this chibi in this panel, but play with the composition. So now we went from a vertical panel to a horizontal panel. And the reason why I chose to do this was with the original panel that I showed you guys. We have no idea what she's reacting to. That means there was a panel before that that showed 
either a different conversation with different characters or maybe someone destroyed her bedroom. We don't know and now she just walked in on it. You know what I mean? However, this horizontal panel, there's dialogue going on. And because these speech bubbles are not pointing at her, we know the speech bubbles represent a conversation happening between characters that are not in this panel. And what I did here now is I added a small conjoint little speed bubble to her pre-existing speed bubble with a little dot dot dots in it. And what that represents is after listening to whatever they were saying, she took a moment to think, huh? And then reacted. You know what I mean? That little dot 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 represents a pause. And personally, I like that for comical reasons. I just think it's funny. <laughs> And now we add the gradient on the top where it goes from darkest to light on the top of the panel. Suddenly what they're saying doesn't sound so good. Looking at this panel, pretend it's one of your characters for a moment that is reacting to a conversation. Maybe they're talking about going on a roller coaster and they're afraid of roller coasters. Maybe they're talking about going on a crazy, crazy, creepy voyage. And she's like, I don't want to die. We're going on that voyage? Huh? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's what the gradient on the top of the panel helps the viewer feel that she is not happy about whatever is being said. And once again, we are adding the stress lines underneath her eyes and opening up her mouth and it emphasizes just how stressed out this is getting her. Want more emphasis in her huh? You can do this! A giant speech bubble. <laughs> I think this is a really funny technique. It makes it more comical. A giant speech bubble, just a one word reaction, brings so much emphasis to what she's saying. The speed lines, it just brings it to a whole new level of stressed out girl. <laughs> so now you know a lot of different techniques for dealing with chibis and expressing comical fear. And of course, the character does not need to be a chibi when you're using these techniques to express comical fear. <laughs> but definitely, it's cute. On to the next panel. Now the next emotions that I wanted to explore were both joy and how adding different elements to that can take the panel from feeling lighthearted and cute to feeling ominous and dark. Here's when the fun begins. So here you see two of my main characters, Cecil on the right and Shiko to the left. Those of you who read my series know they are my beloved babies and the main characters of my series, Sacred, which is available in stores. Links to where you can read the first two chapters and support the series are down there in the description box below. Back to the tutorial. <laughs> In this panel, you can see that one character is hugging the other. There's so much joy, so much emotion, and it's just super, super cute. And here, you can see the speech bubble is very pillowy and very cloud-like and says, yay! And basically, by taking it from a regular looking speech bubble to a pillowy, cloud-like speech bubble, it gives a very clear message to the viewer. Read this with joy, there's excitement and just Precious, precious innocence happening in this speech bubble. Also notice that I did not attach a tail to the speech bubble to point to Shiko, the one to the far left. The reason why I did not add a tail to the speech bubble is it would be overlapping one character and that to me looks a little ugly. And in the world of manga, you only add a tail if the character saying the dialogue is right next to the speech bubble. Very important. Now what I love about a composition like this is it's really intimate. You're up close and personal. You see their faces, you see their emotion, you see their interaction. Super, super adorable. However, I feel like showing a character full body is a wonderful storytelling technique. You get to express a lot more movement, a lot more emotion. You get to see their mannerisms, how they move, and you even get to show off their fashion. And of course, to fill up some space, the speech bubble is a lot larger. Now, with a white background, it gives it a really lighthearted feel. And you see that a lot in like shoujo or like comics made for young girls. Now to make it look cuter and more lighthearted, you can add some bubbles and glowy effect in the background. So far we've seen this image and panel treated in a very friendly, kind, and lighthearted way, but what if you took away the bubbles and the shine? 
and you added gray over the characters. What kind of mood is that now? The speech bubble is still fluffy and cloud-like, so you know that they're happy and they're saying yay in a very joyous way. But why would they be grayed out? You will see characters grayed out just for the sake of taking up more space, more visual space, and for visual weight because the background has nothing. There's no furniture, there's no buildings, there's no trees, just a white background. So you can gray out a character if you want to make up for the lack of background. However, it can also give a scene a slightly ominous feel. But let's take it up a notch. Let's take the background from being white to being completely black. Now how does that make you feel? Doesn't it feel really, really freaking ominous? Like there's just something happening right below the surface that we're not aware of? It feels almost like they're doomed. Like something dark in store for them. You know what I mean? Like these were their last moments of happiness. Again, not a spoiler. <laughs> Absolutely not a spoiler. I'm just taking panels out of context. If you guys have actually read my series, you know the actual scene that this panel belongs to. But I'm just taking panels from my series and changing them up to, to teach you guys, okay? So do not worry, this is not a spoiler. <laughs> but now let's take this crazy looking panel with this ominous black background and take it to the next level by adding lonely text in the upper corner that says, but that was years ago. Again, not a spoiler at all, okay? But something like that kind of makes you feel like the scene, the happy scene that you're seeing, at the happy moment that you're witnessing is a memory, a flashback. And unfortunately, things are not like that anymore. So the grayed out characters and the black background and the lonely text, that's kind of the feeling that it gives the viewer, you know what I mean? Something to think about when trying to figure out how to express scenes in your story. Whew, that was heavy. <laughs> and get ready for more heaviness, because next image. Next, I'm going to be focusing on camera angles, but I want to be focusing on two specific, very useful camera angles. One being the bird's eye view, which means the camera is up above and looking down at your characters. And the worm's eye view, or the ant's eye view, which means the camera is down below looking up at your characters. These two camera angles are extremely important to master, not just drawing the anatomy and drawing your characters in perspective, but these two camera angles can really convey a lot of emotion, both comical emotion and very dark emotions. So let's get started. Let's start off with the worm's eye view. So this panel you're looking at is of my character, Vandella. Again, she's from my series, Sacred. So this scene, as you can see, white background, but oh, oh, what's that? She's grayed out, y'all. So automatically, you get a darker feeling the white background, the lonely background, the empty background, and a grayed out character. And seeing her from this angle, it really conveys a very strange, strange feeling. This angle, I feel, really emphasizes just the danger, the darkness of what she's feeling at that moment. Now let's take a look at a panel with a bird's eye view, which is seeing the character from up above. Here you see three of my characters sitting on a bed, almost like the camera is up on the ceiling, you see? Now, this kind of panel for me is extremely important to master for multiple reasons. One, it can really allow you to capture a lot of the background. So as you see in this panel, we have the bed, we can see the floor, we can see a little of the walls as well. But what's also really interesting about this perspective is there's a sense of distance between you, the reader, and the characters. So the camera feels a little far from them, almost like you're eavesdropping, like you're being real nosy and you're listening in on their conversation. You know what I mean? And what emphasizes this is you can't see their faces. If you look at the panel, you can see their clothing, you can see their overall poses, but you can't make out their expressions. There's two reasons why I did this. One, it emphasizes how far away 
the camera actually is from the characters that you can't see their faces. But number two, it forces the reader to play detective. You're forced to look at their bodies, you're forced to look at their poses, and you're forced to read their dialogue in order to understand what they're feeling. You're not just relying solely on their facial expressions. You have to put everything together. Something to really keep in mind when planning out your pages and planning out your scripts. Next, image. And now this panel for me is super, super interesting because it is up close and personal. The total opposite of the bird's eye view. This up close and personal panel, it's all about showing you their emotions, be it joy or anguish, you're up in that, you know what I mean? In this panel, I did not gray out the entire character. What I did do was I put some shadow over their eyes. Remember the chibi earlier in this video where I put gray gradient over their eyes to kind of show that they felt sick with worry and fear? It's a similar effect in this panel, but to take it up a notch, I also made their speech bubble black. For me, a black speech bubble really emphasizes that whatever is being said is no good. But of course, if you gave a black speech bubble to a character in a comical scene, it just shows that whatever they're saying might be scary to the other characters, but it's funny for us, the viewer. You know what I mean? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. Tell me guys, which one of these techniques was your favorite? Will you be using any of these in your manga and comics? Please let me know in the comments down there below guys. I love hearing from you guys and I'm so curious to know what you thought of this video. And if you have any video requests for me, please let me know down there in the comments below. Art challenges, art tutorials, let me know, I'll do it. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up guys. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And until next Thursday, Please take care, God bless, and do not be afraid to nerd out. Take care, guys. There are countless options out there, girl. You can read 12 different manga and comics, and all 12 will share some composition and angles and ways of expressing emotion and so on, but each artist will develop their own way to show off mood and emotions and so on and so forth like there's so many different ways out there and i encourage you guys to go and read and look over your favorite manga and comics and really explore really figure out what they did in each panel that you think was awesome that really expressed emotions the compositions and all that good stuff like learn from your favorites you know what i mean and have fun as storytellers